guys my name is ankush kaurav and i welcome you to con2 series so far in the rest series of tutorials i talked about how to develop get put and post kind of rest apis now in this tutorial let's try to understand how to build those kind of rest apis which would demand delete kind of a request to be made on them so let's start guys in general we go for developing such kind of rest apis you know in those kind of scenarios where we want user to make a request to the application to request it to delete a certain resource which is present there now what does deleting a resource means let's try to understand this overall concept of deleting a resource using a very simple requirement in this demo application so here my requirement is uh, very simple guys all i want is user to make a request to this application to delete a specific student's record that's all about it so what task i would perform here to fulfill this requirement well i'm going to simply provide the users this rest api so when a user is going to make a delete request on this rest api you know by specifying the name of the student within the rest api itself in at the end you know whose record a uh, user want to basically delete from the application when that request is going to reach this application this application is simply going to delete that student's record if it's successfully able to delete it then it's going to return true and uh, if it's not able to delete it successfully it's going to return false in the response body to the client now question is what code i got to write in this uh, controller class so as to fulfill this requirement so as to build this specific rest api guys for get put and the post kind of rest apis which we developed in the earlier tutorial whenever we were developing a new rest api we were basically including a new rest api controller method you know in the controller class so here also we are not going to do something you know extra this is what is required for building this rest api all i need to do is to include a new rest api controller method in this java class and uh, i'll be done so let's do one thing let me include the required rest api controller method for this rest api and uh, later i will explain all related concepts to you in detail so here i'm done with including the required rest api controller method for the rest api which we wanted to develop in this tutorial now let's understand this step by step guys now when a user is going to make a delete request on this rest api and when that request is going to reach this application you know this rest api controller method is going to be called why because of this uh, pattern and uh, this argument request method dot delete so once this uh, controller method is called this path variable annotation is simply going to extract the name of the student from the rest api which client uh, has used to make the request and is going to assign the same to this student name and after that this method is uh, just trying to delete this student's record from the database so if it's successfully able to delete it then it's going to return true otherwise it's going to return false to the client now here i haven't written the exact logic you know all those if else kind of uh, clauses just to keep this tutorial a bit simpler uh but in your actual project you are supposed to be writing you know the logic based on your project's requirement all right so after including this rest api controller method now if i go to the postman and let's say i want to delete uh, the student's record you know whose name is uh, the rock so in that case what i would do i would specify the name of the student at the end of this rest api that's what is this url pattern and then i would make a delete request on this 
I will choose delete. Now I'm not supposed to be sending any information along with it. And uh, when I'm not sending any information, I'm not required to even, you know, send any headers along with the request. So I would delete this off. Now, if you want the response of uh, this, you know, in the XML format, then you may specify this header accept because when you specify accept value as application slash XML, in that case, uh, whatever response this application is going to generate, you know, that has to be XML. So if it can generate in XML, it's only then this is going to send the response, is going to process the request. Otherwise, it's simply going to, you know, uh, tell to the client that uh, it cannot process the request because its response cannot be generated by it in XML format. Because this application can generate in XML format. So if we specify here accepts value as application slash XML, so it's going to work properly. Now after this, if I make a delete request on this REST API, what's going to happen? Well, I expect true in the response body and status code as 200 OK. Let's see if this happens or not. Cool. So here I've got true as response body and uh, status as 200 OK. And I've here got, uh, you know, this uh, response body in XML format. Why? Because of this accepts value application slash XML. Now, if I delete this, and uh, then I make a request. Then it's up to the application to decide in what format it has to send the response. Now this application supports XML as well as JSON formats. So it will decide, you know, on its own in what format it has to prepare and send the response. Now it's not a compulsion for this application to prepare the response in XML and send the same to the client. So now if I make a request, here I've got the response in XML format. Now here I've got XML not because uh, it was mandatory for this application to send, you know, the response in XML. It's just that out of uh, JSON and XML, it uh, chose XML by default. That's all about it. But if we would have uh, written here, accepts value as application slash XML, in that case, application, you know, would have to send the response in XML only. And if it's not capable of uh, sending in XML, then it wouldn't have processed the request itself. It would have uh, raised some kind of exception or error. All right. Now, one uh, more important concept you have to understand here. Here we gave user kind of a flexibility to request, you know, for deleting a specific student's record. So this REST API is going to help user to achieve the same. Now, what if we want to give user, you know, a kind of flexibility to make a request to delete all student records from this application? So how we would do that? Well, that's also very easy, guys. All we need to do is to create a new REST API controller method. And here we would write delete all students. Let's change the comments, deleting all student records and here now we don't want user to specify you know a specific student's name at the end of the rest api we want it to make a request to you know delete all students records so this rest api is going to you know help with such a requirement now we don't need this path variable because user is not specifying any student's name within the rest api so this i'm going to delete off from here and here let's change the comment, delete all student records from the database. Now same thing. If it's successfully able to delete all records, it's going to return true and status code as a 200 OK, otherwise false with an appropriate status code. Now here again, I haven't written the complete logic. You know, all those if else kind of clauses. In your actual project, you are supposed to be writing, you know, all that real logic based on your specific project's requirement. So now if I make a request, you know, by making use of this pattern and delete request, yeah, it's already delete. 
what I expect. I expect it to return me true with status code as 200. Okay, let's see if that happens or not. Cool, so here I've got that. Body is true, status code as 200. Okay, it means application successfully deleted all student records from its database. So in this application, I tried explaining you how to design and develop those kind of REST APIs which uh, would demand delete kind of a request to be made on them. So we tried understanding how to delete, you know, a specific student's record. We built the REST API for the same and then we built another REST API, you know, to give user kind of flexibility to be able to request for deleting all student records from the database. In the next tutorial, I would talk about uh, how to use Spring Client to access these REST APIs what we have developed so far. So far, we have been using Postman tool to test these REST APIs, to access these REST APIs. From the next tutorial onwards, we would learn how to use Spring Framework itself to write Java code to test, you know, and uh, access these REST APIs. Guys, a big thank you for learning REST API concepts using Spring MVC Framework with me. If you have any feedback or any constructive comment, do post me a comment below the video or uh, simply write to me on this email ID for all of your queries. Please like this video, share this video if this video has proved useful to you and uh, don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel Gone to Series to get regular updates on uh, what all tutorials we upload you know, to our channel. And I'm going to catch you in the next part of this tutorial.